So in the book, you have like a couple of programs for people to follow. And yep. so could you talk about what those two programs are and kind of what the difference is between the two? Yeah, sure. So the core program, we're calling it in the book, Younger You Intensive. And that is the first program you'll encounter in the book. And that's what we did in the study. So everything in there is you know, verbatim what we prescribed to our participants. Um, and then there's something called the Younger You Every Day. And we created that, again, here in our clinic some time ago for uh, people to transition to after doing the intensive. Um, it's just a little bit laid back. Like we've added, so, so during the intensive, it's, there's no grain, there's no legume, there's no dairy. Um, I don't think people should spend a lifetime off of beans and legumes. I just, I, I, and I talk about my rationale for removing them in the, uh, in the book. So why we pulled them out in the study. Um, we wanted to really kind of control glycemic cycling. And there are some people who have, you know, gastrointestinal distress. Um, but if you can handle them, I think they're just a fabulous food to be consumed. Um, and so in the everyday, you can bring them back in. In the eight weeks of the intensive, there's no alcohol. Um, you can, you know, you can resume you know, moderate drinking in the everyday. So it's just, it's just a little bit expanded. We don't have, we haven't studied it, but it's just, it's a logical sort of, if, if the younger you, if the younger you principles uh, work with you, it's a, it's a logic, it's a logical day-to-day -day program. And then you can sort of jump on the intensive uh, periodically or, you know, live it most of the time, which, which I do. I mean, I, the diet works, the program works really well for me. I, I, I you know, I, 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 although I do, I, I, I do like legumes, so I keep them in to a certain extent. And I have a smidge of dairy, not because I think it's healthy, but because I like my coffee with cream. Um, we also, Richard, if you, if, towards the end of the book, we get into what I just called, you know, colloquially, the younger you hybrid. And this is a combination of both for preconception and pregnancy where we know methylation and demethylation are so, 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 so important. And it just made sense to me to tweak the macros a little bit to make it a healthful diet for, you know, those times of our lives. Yes. Right. When you're pregnant or you need kind of the extra, you need energy. extra protein and yeah. And if you're, yeah. And, and you need some, you know, you need extra protein, you need extra calories. You're consuming a ton of calories. There's no calorie restriction, but you're just, you're consuming for two during pregnancy. And so, and when you're nursing as well, so you just, you, you need a, a, a different nutrient ratio and different quantities. Would you need, would you need more protein after 60? Do you think? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we adjust our numbers for that as well. Yep. Okay. Right. And then the recommendation is like the, you would do the intense every what, twice a year or something like that. Yeah. That's what we put in the book. Um, hmm. Yeah. I mean, people can figure it out. I, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't have a, a firm answer or position on it. I mean, I, for some of us, it works well all the time. For me, it's a, you know, it's a great dietary pattern for me to reach for. And I keep the, you know, the cheat sheet that we used in our study on my fridge. So I remember like, oh yeah, okay, let me throw some beets in the salad. You know, let me get a little bit of this and that. We do recommend more, we, we recommend fermented foods in the intensive in the book, whereas we didn't, we had to truncate the study program a little bit because it has to be something that's doable for our participants. And it was pretty involved. Um, but, you know, I make sure I get fermented foods on my, in, inside me on a daily basis. Um, uh, but yeah, so for some of us, it's just going to be a, a, an, an eating pattern that's absolutely doable and easy. And, you know, you, you can stick with it for the long term with, you know, a few tweaks. And for others, it's going to feel more like, you know, something that, that they don't want to do all of the time. Um, so I think you can, choose what works. And I think as biological age testing becomes more and more affordable, uh, we'll be able to see what works best for us. 
also, you know, the other thing, Richard, is I talk about there's a big supplement section. So we only used a greens powder and a probiotic in the study, but I think there's a number of supplements we want to think about in our lives, you know, basic things like vitamin D and fish oil, and certainly a little extra polyphenol. Um, if we want to, I'm a fan of NAD uh, products. And, you know, so there's, there's, there's a lot of additional nutrients we can think about layering in. The only way that we're going to know whether they're working for us is by looking at biological age and, you know, other biomarkers and how we feel, of course. Right. So that was actually a kind of a question would be around measuring. So speaking of biological age, so would you recommend that people get their epigenetic age checked and any, yeah. any idea of how often? I do. I think, I think we really need to get comfortable with using these tools. I think they're going to be more and more prevalent. And I think as they become more prevalent and understood, you know, the cost will drop. Um, I would probably recommend annually, but for those of us who are kind of addicted to biohacking, do it, you know, every six months. Yeah. I, I mean, you saw change in two months, right? Eight weeks. In our study population, yeah. So you could, you could drop it down. Yeah, right. I guess, yeah. So yeah, let me restate that. It, and this would be true in our app for people jumping in and, do, and following our program. You do it at baseline and you do it at, at the end. However, once you've done that structure, you don't want, I don't, you don't need to get your bio age every eight weeks. I mean, that would just be cost prohibitive for most of us. If you can afford it, do it. I mean, I think it's kind of interesting and fun, but it's expensive. Yes, it would be. Uh, but you, you did provide, was it the biological age assessment? Um, like a questionnaire. Yeah. So I yes. actually, I, I looked at that. Well, actually I did it for myself and I was yes. like minus 1.5, I think. I missed a few of them. Um, but yeah, so what was it was pretty close, right? It, was, it wasn't bad. It was probably, you probably wanted it to be a little better than that. Yeah. My bio age using our biological age subjective questionnaire isn't, isn't as fabulous. <laughs> and I know like I'm, I sit at my desk for too long. I mean, there are things that I'm doing that, that I could do better. I could, you know, pop on my treadmill desk behind me, um, you know, every hour instead of, you know, every three or four hours. Um, the biologic, so we just uploaded it into an online uh, structure, so it's much easier. And you can get that at youngeryouprogram.com backslash B-A-S-A. So link to that for sure. It's a lot of fun. Um, we're going to give people their score results so they can look at the questions that, so you, you can get it in the book. It's in the book as you did it. Um, but you can also go online. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And I think it can be a motivational tool. Um, to just see where, you know, you added an, a year on or you were, if you were net neutral or something, you know, so you can see areas for improvement. It is not validated. <laughs> However, that would be fabulous. You know, we'll use it in the study. We'll have people use it in the study. It's within the app. And, you know, we can look and see whether it tracks and we could tweak it, you know, accordingly to tighten it up with, um, you know, the DNA methylation clocks. Um, and in that way, begin the validation process. But I think it's a well-designed tool. My, we worked on it here, my team and I, and actually, again, Josh Middeldorf um, gave us, uh, worked on this with us, kind of led our, led our team after our initial iteration and refinement and calculations and so forth. So I, I think it's a fun tool. I think it's a better, you know, assessment out there than a lot of them that you can get online. And it, it does make you think about the things that you're doing and, and are, are they going to be helping or hindering? Um, and so you also have the, was it the MSQ, the medical um, symptom questionnaire, the, the, which, which I also thought was very good as a way of kind of tracking your progress. Yes. And we use that again. We, well, that's a, that's a foundational subjective assessment in functional medicine. So for, you know, we've been using that since really the foundation of functional medicine. All of our patients do it at every encounter here and at most functional medicine practices. Yeah, it's really useful to kind of zero in on what's going on um, symptom-wise. And you can get your baseline score you, and you can do that weekly. 
um, to see whether how you're responding um, to the program. And ideally, you're seeing, you know, if you have symptoms at baseline, you're seeing an improvement uh, over time. But if you don't, I mean, you know, it also can clue into, you know, maybe there's a, maybe there's something you're consuming that you're actually allergic to, and it can sort of show symptoms up there, or maybe you're developing a cold or, I mean, it's, it, it can be a useful tool. And if for folks who use it in our book, if you do hit a section with questions and, you know, I would consult with your medical provider and, um, you know, chase down what's going on if you're not seeing resolution or if you're seeing a worsening of symptoms. But yeah, it's a great, great tool. Also in the app and um, our nutrition team is, you know, is trained in it. So they're another resource should people choose that direction. 